Hey what's up YouTube, in this video I'll be showing you how to make an incredibly customizable fishbowl house. I have made absolutely nothing like this before, this is probably one of the stranger things that I've ever built and one of the cooler things that I've ever built as well. This came from a suggestion from several of you subscribers and hopefully you guys like it. If you do I'd really love it if you could show this video some support by hitting that like button, it'd mean the world to me. By the way just in case you have any more building related needs, whether that be a police station, a suburban house, a car, um, any sorts of various movie builds and animal type builds, maybe even a library, check out the card system, check out the description below and I'll leave links to loads of builds and playlists that I think that you guys might really enjoy. But that's more than enough talking, let's build our fishbowl house. So to make it we're going to need some cyan stained clay and we'll want some regular glass block. We're only going to be starting with these two materials for now. So once you have each one of those two materials, and once you've figured out where you want to make it, I'll be making it right here, you're going to want to look directly at the ground like this and place a cyan stained clay. From that cyan stained clay, do an up left diagonal. So looking at the floor, as if you're building a pixel art, do an up left diagonal. Go left by two, one, two. Do an up left diagonal, go left by one. Do two up left diagonals, one, two. Go up by one and do an up left diagonal. Move up by two, one, two. Do an up left diagonal and go up by four, one, two, three, four. Then do an upright diagonal and go up by two, one, two. Do an upright diagonal, go up by one. Do two upper right diagonals, one and two. Go right by one, do an upright diagonal and go right by two. Do an upright diagonal and go right by four. One, two, three, four. Do a bottom right diagonal, go right by two. One, two. Do a bottom right diagonal, go right by one. Do two bottom right diagonals, that's one and two. Then come down by one. Do a bottom right diagonal, come down by two. One, two. Do a bottom right diagonal and come down by four. One, two, three, four. Do a bottom left diagonal and come down by two, one, two. Do a bottom left diagonal, come down by one. Then do two bottom left diagonals, that's one and two. Go left by one. Do a bottom left diagonal, left by two. Bottom left diagonal and go left until you connect all the way back to where you first started. And you'll end up with a shape that should look a little bit like this. So this is the base circular part of your fishbowl and this is where everything's going to get built from so once you have your circle you then with your glass block want to one block above and one block outwards in relation to your fishbowl you want to have a circular shape of glass that is again one block higher and one block outwards in relation to that cyan stained clay base so this is going to be where we start layering up the fishbowl. And honestly, one of the greater amounts of time that you'll spend making this entire thing is probably going to be making the glass bowl that everything is going to sit in. It's quite big, it takes a while to make, and in certain places it's just a little bit fiddly. So it will take a while, but honestly it's more than worth it once it's finished. Trust me, it's going to look absolutely amazing once this is finished. It is it's probably, and I've made some weird houses, probably the weirdest house that I've made so far. Unfortunately, I got interrupted, so I have absolutely no idea what I was just saying, but we're currently building the foundation for the entire bowl. As you can see, that's pretty much what we want to have. We want to have a circle of glass, one row outwards and one row higher in relation to the cyan stained clay. Now, once you have that circle of glass, we then want to do the same thing to the glass. So, to the glass layer, we now want to add an additional layer of glass, one row higher and one row outwards in relation to that very first layer of glass. And this is once again just going to make the bowl a little bit bigger and it's also going to shape it a little bit more because of course fish bowls aren't just like a tube although you can get fish bowls like a tube it's more like a it's more like a circle it's more it, it, it's just more like a ball or something like that it's, it's not just like a standard boring shape so we're just going to do this layer and this layer actually isn't going to stand alone this is going to be a little bit bigger 
than the other layers. We're going to add an additional layer of glass on top of this before we move on and we make the bowl any bigger. And it's not actually going to get too much bigger like circumference wise. It's not going to get too much bigger at all. So I just got to make sure that I did that little bit right there. No, I didn't get that bit right. I placed one here. There we go. I thought that I just made a little bit of an error. Just, uh, just easy, easily done as you're mindlessly placing your glass. Sometimes you just place one in the wrong place. So we're just going to, as I said, continue going all the way around. And it's actually getting to be quite big. And I think that we've just about done this layer. And boom, there we go. So now we have an even bigger circle of glass going around. And as I said, we now want to have an additional layer of glass on top of this. So not only do you want to have that once... Remember, you don't only just want to have that once, you want to have two layers of this particular glass. So, this uh, this particular circle, the second one going all the way around, we want to have two layers of glass for it, instead of just a standard one. And like I said, it's not going to get too much bigger than this. Although, the biggest layer of the bowl is the one with most layers stacked on top of it, so it does take a while. So, that's what we want to have so far. Well, once you've got that taken care of, we now want to one row higher, one row outwards in relation to that second layer of glass. We want to add an additional circle of glass blocks. So this is going to take a little while, and this is the glass layer that is going to be the biggest. The bowl doesn't get any bigger than this. It's It, it stays roughly this size, like width-wise, like circumference-wise, as big as this layer is going to get. But we also have to stack loads and loads of glass onto this particular layer, so much so that I probably won't even do it on recording, because it'll be very, very repetitive, it'll take a long time, and there's no real reason for me to include it in the tutorial. So once we've got this first layer taken care of, I'll outline how much glass you want to add on top of this, and then we'll probably just skip ahead because there's no reason to add an extra four or five minutes to the video just when it's just when it's going around in circles and stuff like this so I think that we're actually about three quarters of the way done with this particular layer you can see how long this actually takes it does take quite a while like I said the hardest bit of this is definitely building the actual bowl the rest of it is what I'd consider the really really fun bit and that's customizing your fish bowl adding different things to it adding adding whatever you want we're going to have uh, we're going to have a couple of cool things hanging around floating around in our bowl so that is the biggest layer of glass for the bowl as you can see quite massive once you've got that taken care of you now want to add 10 additional layers of glass on top of this so it will come as high as one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it will come as high as that and we want to go all the way around the bowl and we want to add our layers of glass just like this it's going to take a really long time so as i said i'm not going to include this bit in the tutorial i'll be back in just a moment once i've added 10 layers of glass on top of that largest layer so i'll be back in just a moment once i've done this for myself continue doing this okay so this is what it looks like once you've added those 10 layers of glass on top of that first initial layer if you're still working on this pause this video if necessary if you are still working on it and once you've got that taken care of you can then hit play progress on to this next bit so the next thing that we're going to do now is make the ball a little bit smaller so one row higher and one row inwards in relation to this top layer of glass we're going to have another circle of glass so this is going to be one row smaller than the previous layer and it's going to be the same size as the previous layer to the previous layer if that makes any sense so we are bringing this in a little bit and we are now going to drag gradually shrink the bowl as we get a little bit higher and of course we're going to do the lip at the top of the bowl as well but for the most part the bowl is, you know, it's, it's almost done. We're probably about 70% of the way there now because this is a very, very time-consuming part of this tutorial. As I keep saying, as I've said like three, maybe even four times now, this is the hardest part, it's the longest part, and it is the least entertaining part. It's not fun making this bit at all, but it's definitely worth it. Once we have the container for the house, it is going to get a lot more fun. So as you can see, we now have the inward layer of glass and what we now want to do is add an additional layer of glass on top of it so as for the layer previous 
to this one, um, or previous to the previous, we want to add an additional layer of glass. So we want to have two rows in total of this glass. Whoops, I keep placing it, uh, placing it elsewhere. We want to have two layers of glass instead of just the one. And then we're going to make it a little bit smaller. So um, I'm very, very sloppily, very clumsily adding this layer, but uh, but it's okay. We can just delete where we place it. Although it's sometimes a little hard to see where you've placed it. So once you've added that second layer on top. What we now want to do is another layer of glass, one row inwards, and one row higher than the previous layer. You guys know how this goes now. You can see how this is layered up. It's very, very easy, but very, very boring. I will say that this is very, very boring to do. It's, uh, I've had a lot of builds like this, where unfortunately to get through them, you do have parts like this, which just isn't fun. But the end result is almost always worth it. So I think that we're almost halfway with this now. And uh, once we've got this taken care of, I do think, yeah, we're going to move on to the small smallest part of the bowl. The absolute smallest part of the bowl. So, uh, we're almost halfway. Do I? We're a little bit over halfway now. We're, uh, we're almost three quarters away there. I am literally counting down the time that it takes to make this part because uh, I, I don't like it. I don't like this at all. I wish that there was like a I wish there was like a sphere making tool in Minecraft that would just do this for me. But, we have that first layer of glass. We want to have that, and once you have that first layer, we're actually going to now do another layer of glass, one row above and one row inwards. So again, one row above and one row inwards. So this is going to be the smallest layer of the bowl, like full stop, period, that's it. This is going to be the smallest layer of the bowl, the one that we're adding now. And there is also going to be another layer added on top of this. So it's going to be two rows of this, rather than just the one row. And the only good thing about getting like nearer the top of the bowl, and at the very start of the bowl, is that, um, of course, since the shape is smaller, it takes a little bit less time to make. Just because it's a little bit smaller, there's a few less blocks involved so it doesn't take as much time which is definitely a massive plus i wish uh, i wish that this thing was a little bit smaller but if you make it too much smaller honestly you can't fit all of the cool stuff in there you can't you can't have a really amazing looking fishbowl house so um, we're just going to finish off this layer. I do believe that it's done now. Perfect. So once you have that layer of glass, we now want to add an additional layer of glass block on top of it. So this wants to be, in total, two layers of glass block. After you've got this second layer taken care of, we're now we're then going to take care of the little lip that you have at the top of the bowl. You guys have seen a fish bowl before. It kind of comes in a shape like this, like it's small at the bottom, it comes out a little bit at the middle, and then it goes in again at the top, kind of like how we have now, but then it has like a lip on the top of it, so you can carry it, and so no water spills over or anything like that. So that's what you want to have, you want to have two layers of that glass, and then this is what you want to do, one row higher now, again, and one row outwards this time we want a layer of glass block that goes all the way around the top of the bowl but this time we're not going to be using diagonals we're going to be connecting the lip of the bowl at the top together at the edges so we're going to form a nice solid shape it's all one piece of glass instead of knocking off the edges knocking off the corners like we previously won and we are going to have a nice solid shape. It's a strong line. And this is, like I said, the lip at the top of the bowl that just stops like water. You know if you ever pick a fish bowl up and like the water sways a little bit? Well, this just like stops it from going out. It stops your fish flying everywhere, basically. So it's the same principle. And it just makes it look like a, a bit more of an interesting shape. If nothing else, if nothing else, if you're not going realistic with this, it makes it look a little bit more interesting. So you want to end up with a shape that should look a little bit like that. And that's the bowl. It actually looks quite good, doesn't it? So once you've got that taken care of, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're going to do next. So we now get to work inside of the bowl. For the inside of the bowl, we're going to want to grab some stone brick stairs. We'll need some sand. We'll also want to grab some stone bricks. We'll also want some polished andensite. Also grab some dark oak planks. You'll want oakwood planks. And you also want to grab some oakwood stairs. That's all we can carry at the moment. So once you have each one of those, and once you've 
header to the inside of the ball, this is what you want to do. You want to first of all fill in the very bottom of your fish tank with sand. This takes a while. It takes so long that I think that I should probably cut this out of the tutorial. What do you guys think? I should finish filling in the bottom of this with sand and then I'll come back. So fill in the entire bottom of your fishbowl with sand. Guys, once you've got that taken care of, we can then move on to the next bit. So I'll be back in a second once I've got that taken care of for myself. So this is what the bottom of your fishbowl should look like once it's been 100% fully filled in. It's just sand and nothing else. You can use other various materials if you want. I know like in a lot of fishbowls you use like different colored gravel and stuff. Maybe you want that. I personally like sand. Once you've got that taken care of, it's now time for us to finally figure out where the front of our bowl is. So for instance, the front of my fishbowl is right here. The entrance to your fishbowl is in the dead center of the side that you choose to make the front. So this is mine and as you can see we've knocked out these two blocks here in the glass. We have placed a stone brick stairs and through this we'll be able to like walk into our fishbowl and we'll be able to walk around. Now, once you've got that taken care of, you want to come, once you've figured out the front, to the left hand side of the bowl. And you want to find, can you see where we have this row of five on the left hand side of the bowl, this row of five glass on the left at the bottom? We want to find this block, which will be right here, very near the row of five coming towards the front of the bowl. Well, going right of this, so we want to, going right of this glass block, we want to go right and we want to count in and find the eighth block in the ground. So this will be the first block, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Place a sand. On top of that sand, place three stone bricks. That's one, two, three. Go right of that third stone brick by six. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Go down by two, one, two. Then place a sand underneath that, connect it to the ground. We then want to come to the top back part of our stone brick structure. Take the top back corner blocks and extend them back each by six. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Connect each one of those six blocks together and also connect each one of those six blocks to the ground. That's one, two stone bricks, one sand. And remember, two bricks, one, two, one sand down to the ground. You can then, if you like, connect each one of those sand blocks all the way down to the ground together. So connect each one of those sand blocks all the way down to the ground together like that. What we can now do is we can, with our and insight, finding the front of this castle, and by the way, this is a little mini castle inside of the center of the bowl. We want to, starting from this bottom left-hand side on the front of the castle, we want to go right by one stone brick. We then want to place two polished and insight coming up, that's one, two. Then leave a gap of one going right. We then want to, on top of this block, do two and insight coming up, place a stone brick like that. So we want to have these two gaps on the front of our castle and you just want to fill those in with stone bricks on the left hand side right hand side and back of the castle you want to do a row of stone bricks all the way at the bottom so you want to have these holes very much like a visor in the side of the castle and that's important for later we also want to on top of the edges of the castle so like starting from the top front left hand corner of the castle we want to on top of this corner place a stone brick Going right, miss one, place a stone brick. Right, miss one, stone brick. Right, miss one, stone brick. Go all the way around the top of the castle following this pattern. Miss one, stone brick, miss one, stone brick, miss one, stone brick, miss one, etc. What we can now do, and this is kind of the fun bit, we can get rid of our glass and our cyan stained clay. We haven't needed those for a while. And grab yourself, let's say, some what might be good here. Maybe, maybe some light blue stained glass and maybe some, uh, where is it, some light blue stained glass paint. So fill the sides of your castle. As a matter of fact, it might not be good to use the glass pane, and here's why. Uh, on the inside of the castle, we're going to be placing things, so like beds and stuff like that. So we don't want the glass pane sticking to anything, so it's probably best if you use light blue stained glass everywhere. Plus, also place some light blue stained glass all the way at the top of the castle. It's important that the castle is airtight. At least for some of you. I'll explain later. So you want the castle, you want to be able to see out of it basically. Also, fill in the floor of the castle with your material of choice. I'm going to be using oak wood planks because I want a pretty decent realistic-ish I I know realistic, I know it's a silly thing to say. Uh, castle. I'm also going to destroy this block for the entrance and I'm going to place an oak wood plank here. I'm also going to place one in front of it. Left and right of that, I'm going to place a dark oak wood plank. 
Then I'm going to place an oakwood stair coming out of the centre oakwood plank and then a dark oakwood plank either side. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to, with the light blue stained glass, or a better colour fit really is going to be uh, dark blue stained glass, and I'm going to make a little chamber that connects the castle all the way to the front of the fishbowl, and we want this to be airtight. Or, again, some of you may not want this to be airtight, but that's a decision that you'll have to make later. It's easy to undo if you don't want to fill your fishbowl with water, and it's a very real decision because it changes the atmosphere of the fishbowl completely once you add water. So you see, you want to have an airtight chamber between the entrance to the fishbowl and the actual castle, and that's why the castle's transparent, because if we want to, we can fill this thing with water. So, once you've got the castle taken care of, it's now time to spread the castle up a little bit so around the castle we're just going to be placing a little bit of sand so we just want to have a little bit of a sand structure going all the way around the edge of the castle this can be as big or as small as you want I'm opting for something like reasonably sized like this and I'm also going to shape the side of the castle just a little bit so on the side and on the back I'm just going to make it a little bit of a mound of sand that the castle sits on rather than just like a circular shape or anything like that I'm going to make a little bit of a mound of sand that the castle sits on on. I'm now going to get rid of all of my materials and I'm going to start adding some things that will make this place look a lot bit better. So, for instance, some plant life would look nice. So, I, I'll need some dark oakwood stairs, I'll need some green stained clay and some lime stained clay. And just left of the castle here, I'm going to place a plant. So, on the ground, I'm going to place two green stained clay coming up. So, like here and here. And then around the base, I'm going to place dark oakwood stairs. So, around the base, dark oakwood stairs like that. Then, coming up from that green stained clay, I'm going to do, shall we say, like four lime stained clay. That's one, two, three, four. And then going to take this third one, and I'm going to extend it towards me by one. I'm also going to take that left third block, I'm going to extend it to the left by one, do an up left diagonal, and go up by three. That's one, two, three. I'm then going to come to the back of our little kelp or plant, or whatever you want to call it, I don't know what plant it is, and we want to take this second block in our line, I'm going to extend it back by one, going to do a backward diagonal, and I'm going to go up on top of it by, mm, let's say one, two, and maybe three, like that. And that looks relatively like a plant. I mean, you can make it look even more like a plant, you can extend that to the right, and you can just shape it until you're happy. That's the important part, that you're actually happy. And I think that that kind of looks like a plant that you place in a fish tank. And not only do I want one there, but I want one in this back corner as well. So maybe like here. Shall we? Yeah, here. So I'll place two green sand clay coming up. Dark oakwood plank, or dark oakwood stairs going around the base of the plant. I'll then extend this one up by, I'd say about four again. I want roughly the same shape. That's one, two, three, four, maybe even a little bit bigger. I'll make it five because it is behind the castle. I'll make it five. And then I'll take um, this third block again. I'll extend this forward by one. I'll uh, then take this, yeah, I'll take this fourth block. I'll extend it left by one. I'll do an up left diagonal. And then I'll go by like one, two, three, about that. That seems okay. And then on the back, I'll do a roughly similar thing. So like from this block, back one then a backward diagonal, and I want to go up by one, two, three. Again, I don't want it all to be the same shape, I want it to be a bit more dynamic. And then I'll take like this first block on the right, and I'll do like an upright diagonal. I'll go right of it, upright diagonal, and that kind of looks like a plant as well. And there we go, we just have a little bit of greenery, and uh, maybe even one, one there, does that does that look kind of planty? I don't know, maybe destroy that block, place another one, that's completely up to you. We want some more things now. So, um, right at the back here, maybe we'll place a couple of stones. So, maybe some, like, stone brick stairs and some stone brick slabs. Um, stones are pretty simple, aren't they? So, in the centre, we'll place, like, one, two, three stone bricks coming up. We'll place stairs going all the way around. So, we'll just place a formation of stairs going all the way around. And that looks a little bit like a stone, doesn't it? That looks alright. And we'll have another stone here on the front right-hand side. Or maybe even a starfish. I hadn't considered this, but maybe we could have, like, a starfish. Maybe, like, magenta wool. Is is this going to be a little bit too crazy? Can I, can I even make a starfish? Do I have enough room? Um, I might, I might fail at this. I, um... That kind of looks like a starfish, to be honest. It kind of looks like a starfish. Could I make one out of, out of like never brick stairs and never brick that would look better? Hmm. You know what? That's just not going to work. But do you know what will work? Is a clam. So grab yourself some quartz stairs, some block of quartz, maybe some like magenta stained clay, and maybe something to use as some sort of pearl. Uh, maybe a block of diamond, perhaps. That might look good. Um, to make this. 
Uh, and it doesn't look amazing, by the way. You might want to play someone else, something else there, maybe even a rock or something. Um, I'm going to have like a a plush shape first on the floor. I'm going to have like uh, like this, a plush shape of of magenta stained clay. So like here, I think. And then I'm going to take out my quartz stairs, and I'm going to place quartz stairs going all the way around the base of this, just kind of like form um, the bottom of a clam shape. And we want this to be as small as possible, like this. And then I'm going to take this back block, I'm going to go on top of it by one block of quartz, and then I think I'll go up by... No, I'll, I'll go up on top of it by three with the magenta sand clay, that's one, two, three. I'll take that second block, I'll extend left and right by one. I'll then do upside down quartz stairs. Um, underneath and on top of the plus shape parts there and i'll do like a block of quartz left and right of that perfect that looks pretty good and on top of that i think i'll place a yeah i'll place there we go i'll place that and behind it i'll notice ah okay so we've got a little bit of a problem back here so below here we can place a stair and then we can do a block of quartz here block of quartz here and we can just cover that up a little bit and um, basically just to hide the clay and then i'm going to place a block of diamond right in the center there now does that look like a pearl because that's the point and does this look like a clam if it does look like a clam to you keep it if it doesn't get rid of it i think that that kind of looks enough like a clam that you'd know what it is and i think that it's a little bit more interesting than whatever i was working on a starfish that's what i was working on that didn't end very well at all did it i kind of like that use a rock use a starfish use whatever you like that's kind of the point well once you've got that taken care of um something else cool that you can add to this uh, get rid of everything grab yourself some oak wood planks some dark oak wood planks we need some uh dark oak wood stairs and some where are they oak wood stairs we'll also need a block of gold if we can find it and we'll also want to grab oh we've well, we also need some buttons. So, in this, like, front left-hand space here, maybe facing towards this a bit again. Or maybe not. Maybe not facing towards it. We want to have, like, a um, a layer of three ochre plants. Like, one, two, three right here. And one, two, three in front of it. We then want to place uh, hmm, a block of gold, like, right in the center three, actually. We want to knock out that center block, place a block of gold there. We then want to place an oakwood stairs on top of that gold and behind the oakwood stairs. We then want to play, dark, place dark oakwood stairs left and right and behind each one of those stairs and that forms kind of a chest we're also going to place some buttons on top or in front of and behind those oak wood planks and that will form a pretty cool looking chest so we have a couple of plants we have a rock we have a chest we have an oyster a clam whatever you want to call it we have that and i think it looks pretty good and so does our castle it's looking pretty nice we're missing a couple of things though what else is it that fish like fish balls and stuff usually have what do they usually have they have fish in them don't they so why don't we add a fish to make this fish we're going to need block of quartz we'll need some black wool we'll also need some oh god where is it we'll need some red sandstone and we'll need some red sandstone stairs and we'll need some yellow stained clay let's make this fish so i want the fish kind of like in let's say this position so i want it like front right ish of the bowl and i want him to say let's let's say i want him to start there like in roughly this position now you can alter him you can move him you can put him higher you can put him lower i want my fish here so where this quartz block is we're actually going to um we're actually going to go left of this quartz block by one the block of quartz then we're going to destroy that original block going right of this quartz block we want to place a black wall on top of that black wall, place a block of quartz. Go right at that block of quartz by three, yeah, by three with your yellow sand clay. That's one, two, three. Then we want to go down by three with the clay. That's one, two, three. We then want to go left by three. One, two, three. We then want to do an up left diagonal. And we also want to fill in the center of the fish with the yellow sand clay. We then want to, on the back of the fish, we want upside down and regular facing sandstone stairs like this so you form kind of like a triangle coming out of the back center part of the fish on the right hand side we then want to have diagonal red sandstone blocks above and below the tail of the fish we then on top of the fish behind the eye we want to have a red sandstone stairs that faces this way and we want a red sandstone block behind like that we then at the bottom part of the fish we want to take this second block coming in from the left this one here and we want to place a 
a red sandstone block with a red sandstone stairs behind it. And we want that on the front of the fish and the back of the fish. We'll end up with a fish that should look a little bit like that. Is it a perfect looking fish? No, but I'll show you what it looks like from the outside. It, it looks like a fish, to be honest. It, it looks pretty much like a fish. It looks kind of cool. It's actually a little bit of a throwback to, you might be able to see over in the background there, very, very far in the background behind the chicken coop is the cat house and it's the same fish there. So I wanted to use the same one because I think it looks kind of cute and it adds to it a little bit. And if you look at the outside of the bowl, this thing actually looks really, really amazing already. We're missing something in the upper left-hand-ish side though. So you can add more fish, you can add more of whatever you want. I'm going to add a jellyfish. So I'm going to grab some uh, pink stained glass, some magenta stained glass and some purple stained glass. I'm going to come to the top of the bowl and I'm going to come to the back diagonal-ish area and I want my jellyfish to be submerged but I don't want it to be massively submerged so maybe maybe about here I, I want my jellyfish to be about I'd say about here I, I yeah yeah I think that this is perfect so I'm going to place my jellyfish maybe even a little bit further back maybe just one block back two blocks back okay so i'm going to place my jellyfish here i want it in kind of like the back left handish space no one block forward i'm sorry i'm a little bit picky we want to take this pink stained glass by the way place the same thing except place the jellyfish where you want it i like it here but place it wherever you want as high as low left right back forward wherever you want well once you've figured out the positioning take your pink stained glass and extend it to the right by two one two we then want to take this row of three and extend it towards us by two rows that's one two we then underneath this layer of 3 by 3 glass, we want to, kind of like on the sides, we want to have a diagonal layer of pink stained glass. And it wants to not connect at the corners. So we want to basically go all the way around the bottom of the outside of the 3 by 3 square that we have at the top. And we don't want to connect at the corners. The reason being is this next layer, which is once again going to be one row lower and one row outwards in relation to the previous layer, we then want to go all the way around the base of this, and we want to form a circular shape with our jellyfish. So you can see how we've kind of like arrived at this shape. We uh, don't want this layer to connect at the corners either, and this will form a circular layer like this. We then want to take this layer, we want to extend it down by two layers, that's one, two, and we just want to one, and two, and one, two, and we just go all the way around the base of the thing and just do like a two layers of uh, do two layers of pink glass basically so you can see what I'm doing here uh, not rocket surgery I'm sure that you can figure it out perfect once you've got that taken care of we now want to give our jellyfish legs so with our purple yeah, a purple stained glass. We want to, at the base inside of the jellyfish, we want to take the center blocks on each one of the four sides, and we want to take the center blocks and place a purple stained glass coming inwards, diagonal to what, um, outwards like this. And we want to, from that purple stained glass, we want to go down by two, then outwards in the direction that it's facing. So this one's where we want to do a like an outward diagonal, go down from it by one outward diagonal so let me show you it's actually easier to see than it is to explain so you can see that particular side it's coming out in front we have a row three two one all coming down diagonally do that on each side it's quite easy so like for this left side we want to have a diagonal here go down by two then diagonal down by one diagonal perfect same thing for the back we want to have the same thing for the back so it starts in the same place um molds in the same way so our row of three then our row of god damn it our row of two a row of one and on this side as well, we want to have a row of, whoop, we want to have two, or row three rather, then two, and whoops, we're actually interfering with the kelp or whatever we want to call it, but that's okay, that's that's perfectly fine, and we just want to have that. So there you go, you want to have the four legs of the jellyfish. Let's make the jellyfish a bit more interesting, so obviously the jellyfish probably isn't two-toned. Let's destroy a couple of blocks going around the jellyfish, do this at random, you don't need me for this, do this at random, destroy a couple of blocks around the jellyfish, and make them, instead of pink uh, stained glass, use magenta stained glass. Make sure that you hit every side, um, not, even, not even equally, just make sure it's a little bit speckled. And that is your jellyfish. Looks pretty cool. We have a couple more things to do. Just a, just a couple of small changes now. We're going to grab ourselves some glowstone, some sea lanterns. On the ground floor, on the floor of this thing, we're going to place a couple of randomly dispersed glowstone. Not too many of them, just a few. We're going to place a couple of glowstone. Because I like it. No other reason, really. I kind of like the idea of a couple of, a little bit of light 
headed around everywhere. We have a diamond there. We probably don't need it. That glowstone should be a little bit more forward, I think, though. There we go. And we just want to plop a few glowstone around the base of the ball. Looks good. We want sea lanterns in the space around the, like, we want sea lanterns floating now in the box. And again, we want the sea lanterns to be a little bit randomly dispersed. And we want them kind of like at different altitudes. So we want like one sea lantern like here up above. And we want like one sea lantern like here a little bit lower, but... Um, but forward and then I want a little bit like around this part of the bowl Maybe like in between the fish and the pearl maybe like here Maybe and I want one that is a little bit higher a little bit more central So maybe one that's a little bit Here so yeah that that looks quite good doesn't it doesn't that look uh, that does yeah That looks pretty good or maybe a little bit backwards maybe like two two rows backwards ish and uh, it just makes the bowl look a little bit more interesting from the outside. So you can see the glowstone and you can see the sea lanterns kind of look like bubbles. But they're also light sources as well. Feel free to add more. You might want to place like one, um, one here like at the back. Like coming out of the back here. And maybe one like coming out of the back here. And so on and so forth. Place as many as you like, but they kind of look like bubbles. They kind of look amazing. And this is how your fishbowl will end up looking once you've actually reached this point here. It looks absolutely fantastic. And this is, for the most part, your fishbowl house complete. This is your fishbowl house. It looks great. But there is something more you can do. The tutorial from this point onwards is finished. There's nothing more to say about this, but if you want to turn this into a proper fishbowl house, you can fill it with water. I wouldn't recommend this, and here's why. It ruins it. What looks really amazing, really vibrant, really interesting looking now, and I didn't think this before I did it myself, what looks amazing now will not look amazing once you add water to it because it will cover up all of this hard work that we've done here. It looks great as it is. It will cover up all this hard work and it will make it look a bit boring. I'll show you the original version of this, which isn't as good as this one, by the way. I think this is the best one that I've made. Isn't as good as this. And I'll show you what I'm talking about back in a sec. So this is the original version of my fishbowl. This is what it looks like once it's been completely filled in with water. It looks, in my opinion, a little bit boring. It is intriguing, but it's a little bit boring. The reason that the water comes in at the top bit, by the way, is because there's extra glass in the original version here because I was using the glass to figure out what shape I wanted. It's because I didn't bother to delete the glass. that It, it dips in a little bit, but obviously in the version that we've made, that wouldn't happen. Let's take a look at the inside. So it's an incredibly cool concept, for me at least, that we can walk in here and we can see around to the fishbowl. So, like, we can look out the windows of the castle and we can see these shapes. We can see the lanterns. Inside of the castle, you can see that we have a little bit of bed here. We have a couple of beacons and stuff. And around here, you could place things like chests and you could place, uh, no, you could place whatever you wanted. You could have, like, crafting tables. You can have an ender chest. You can have furnaces. You can have a ruin stand. You can have an enchantment table. You can have another beacon, an ender, pain, an ender portal. You can fill this space up quite nicely if you like. And obviously, in the original version of this would be able to look through the roof as well but what it does do is it makes everything a bit dull so up there you can't see the fish anymore up there in that direction believe it or not you, ca you can't even see it is a jellyfish there's a jellyfish in this bowl i'll show you what i'm talking about let me let me show you so if we come all the way up into here you can see that we have the jellyfish up at the top but you can't see him you can't see the jellyfish because he's, he's just he's just completely blocked out you can't see anything so you spend all of that time making a fantastic looking fish bowl and if you fill it with water it completely ruins it but if we come back to the new version of the fish bowl the one that we've just made we can see that it looks absolutely amazing we can see everything that's in there and it's an absolute amazing looking house and you can do the same thing here i mean you can kind of like have the blue glass here and you can look left and right you can see you can actually see what's built being built in here you can see that jellyfish and it looks amazing you can look through the roof you can see the jellyfish you can look through the sides you can see the colors you can see everything it's fantastic you can still have the bed in here you can still have the little survival house but the difference being here is that you can actually mark 
marvel at all of the work that you've put in and this could take you well over an hour to make who knows i don't know how long this has actually taken me i don't know how long this video will be but the difference being is that this house you can actually see the previous one you can't do what you like it will take a long time to fill with water and you, you won't be able to enjoy what you've actually made cool concept not so cool when you actually sit i think that this is far more interesting i'll leave it to you to decide that hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed designing this. I certainly enjoyed making it. I think that I've made this a little bit better than the original version, honestly. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like. Give it a favorite. Give it a share. Anything you'd feel like doing to help me out. Honestly, I'd really, really appreciate it. I would love it if you could show this video some love. Give it a like. Give it a favorite. Give it a share. I think this is an incredibly innovative house. I think that this is probably one of a kind. I don't know whether anybody's done anything like this, quite like this before. I know people have made like fish tank houses and stuff just from having a bit of a look around on Google, but I don't think that anybody has anything quite like this. I think this looks really, really nice, and it wouldn't have happened without your guys' suggestion. I would have never thought of making this unless you suggested that I make it. I think that it's one of the best houses that I've ever made. Definitely, definitely one of the best theme houses, if nothing else. Give this video a like, give it a favorite, give it a share. Please help me out. I love it when you, I love it when you show me love. I honestly do, and it helps the video out no end, and it makes me just want to make loads of stuff like this. Comment down below what other weird designs do you guys have in your heads? Because honestly, if, it if any of your ideas turn out exactly like this one, I would absolutely love it. I would love to make loads of things that exactly like this. Not exactly like this, but an interesting concept that can be turned into something that is absolutely amazing looking. Subscribe if you haven't already. Not only do we make like weird fishbowl houses around here, we do like animal related builds. We do like film related builds. You might see some angry bird houses. You see a chicken coop, rabbit hutch. Cat house, dog house, police station, library, suburban house, car. Um, over there's an ice cream van. We do loads of weird stuff around here, so subscribe, check it out. Check out the card system. I'll be leaving a couple of other really, really cool builds and playlists in there that I think that you guys will really want checking out or really like to check out. I think you'll love it. Thank you very much for watching. Like, favorite, share if you wouldn't mind. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the card system. I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>